Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch With Us. My name is John Keel, and I am sitting here with a very good friend of mine. I'm not going to say how long we've known each other, because it's, it's been more than a few years. Uh, Elizabeth Dorr, who is the founder and owner of Quill and Pat. Yeah, co-founder, editor-in-chief. That's me. There you go. And you've written for a plethora of other outlets in the past. You still write for yeah. Forbes? Yeah, yeah. So right for Forbes yep. uh, and many, many other places. Uh, it's funny, I met Elizabeth, I believe, probably my first five or six months in the industry, which was many, many, many moons ago. And uh, we've been good friends ever since. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. And, we've, and we've, we've had some stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. we're not going to tell those to you. <laughs> not, nothing too crazy, but fun stories. Uh, yeah, no, we're definitely not going to share those. Um, and you don't live in the United States. No, I've been in Germany since 1988. Wow. So yeah, right in the thick of it, not very far from Switzerland. It's really easy for me to go visit companies. I've been up to Glashütte to see Langenzöne and all the other companies up there a gazillion times, almost right. like a second home. You know, in, in Geneva in just a couple hours. So it's, 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 it's a good location for me, for, for my profession. Right, and when, when we yeah. saw each other in Basel, you had driven your car. Yeah. So you're yeah. in, a, in a, a quick drive to Basel. That's yeah. It. yeah, you're in the right spot. Where, yeah. So I'm in New York. I'm based on Long Island and I'm 47 miles away from here and it took me two hours and ten minutes to get here today <laughs> so it certainly is not uh, Germany or Switzerland so we're in the Lange Boutique we are on Madison Avenue on Langenzen is beautiful New York boutique yeah um, it's it's an incredible atmosphere in here if you've never been it's, it would be great to stop by because it's just it, it, it feels like a little piece of this company which is so full of tradition and full of its own environment. Yeah. Um, and I find that their boutiques always really just just uh, have that environment. You walk in there, you know exactly where you are. I, I, I tend to agree with you a lot. I think um, my feeling when I walked in, it was kind of like I stepped out of New York mm -hmm. into someplace different, mm -hmm. where I can see the street from where I'm sitting here and okay. New York's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you do really feel like it's in a, a much dif different environment. And, um, mm -hmm. And contrary to what I would have thought, I don't feel like it's stuffy. I don't feel like it's. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm in a place where I need to be really quiet or, you know, watch my attitude. Yeah. You know, it's comforting. It's, it's a great spot. Well, that's one of the great things about Alang and Zuna. I find it's it's a it's a an important, a venerable historical company. But it's not a stuffy one. It's it's one that everyone can identify with. Once you've walked into a boutique or exchanged a few words with someone who works for this company, you, you almost feel you're part of the watch fam. Yeah. You know, it's it's it, it's they're so welcoming, and the boutiques I've been in many of them around the world, they all exude that same feeling. Um, they're modeled after the main one in Dresden. And they when I walk in here, I feel like I'm in Dresden because right. I've been there so often. For me, it's like. And it sounds so corny, but it feels like a piece of home. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can I can imagine that. Yeah. And off camera, we were talking about a video that I had watched on Quill and Pad mm -hmm. that was probably five years ago, because this is yeah. the 25th anniversary of the Longa One. It certainly is. Yeah. Okay. And you guys did a video, I guess, or were a part of a video for the 20th anniversary. Right. We premiered a video that was a very emotional piece of of. I want to call it watch film history, yeah. where Lang and Zuna um, really um, put their heart and soul into the 20 years of the Lange One, plus it was 25 years of the Berlin Wall falling that same year, so it was a double anniversary. This year would be 25 and 30. Yeah. Um, very emotional events, the wall falling, Germany reuniting, which allowed Lang and Zuna to be reborn. Right. Maybe you can give a little bit of that backstory. Yeah. Where, I mean, because Lange is technically a very old company. Yeah but they're yeah, also yeah. very new in, in some respects. Yeah, exactly. So Lange was born in 1845 when a man named Ferdinand Adolf Lange um, founded the first watch factory in Glashütte. And um, that also was the founding of the entire watch industry in Glashütte. His whole, his whole outlook was to, to create a whole supplier system. It wasn't just about him and his factory. It was about creating a whole supplier system and branching out and having a watch industry grow in this town. Yeah. And, and the idea was to help its inhabitants who were at the moment quite poor and needed, needed work and jobs. And they were, there was weirdly basket weavers in this area and miners. And so they had this, this um, manual dexterity and he took advantage of it and it all grew from there and with world war ii um and the division of germany into the zones glashütte fell into the eastern zone right. which was russian occupied um, and became east germany behind the iron curtain um, became a combined state owned and so lange and zuna as, as itself ceased to exist for almost 50 years right 
until the fall of the Berlin Wall when um, the founder's great-great-grandson, Walter Lange, really took initiative at the age of 66 <laughs> to refound the company. I yeah. mean, that was retirement age. Yeah, right. And he became an entrepreneur at the age of 66. He did. Yeah, it's, it's an, a really incredible story. Very moving, very emotional. Yeah. So maybe I connect with it a lot more than other people because I'm, I've lived in Germany for more than 30 years and these are my homeboys in a way, yeah. you know? But it's, um, it's a, if you allow yourself to get into the story, you find it's very emotional. It's a very human story. Yeah, I can see how you would feel that maybe you're a little more emotionally invested because of, of where you live and where you've been working. But I have to be very honest with you. When I saw the video, I got very emotionally moved. I, I it was a biography or a biopic or a, yeah. you know, at where, I was watching something that I genuinely, genuinely love mm -hmm. come to life because I was not quite in the industry at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a fantastic video, which kind of brings me to another point of what we spoke about off camera. We did a little bit of talking. <laughs> we just, we've only been together for like 10 minutes. And we covered a couple of things, but we both thought were pretty important. You know, I entered the industry, you well know, as uh, working for Chrono Swiss, which mm -hmm. is also a German sort of, mostly German brand. Definitely a German okay. brand, yeah. Um, <laughs> was. Was, was. And um, it was my first foray into mechanical watches mm -hmm. and, and understanding movements and histories of companies. And mm -hmm. it was at that point, about six months into my career, I remember very, very clearly, like it was yesterday, going into Cellini here in New York to visit them on a sales call. And there was a longer one in the window. And it was beautiful from the front, you know, just as, as you would imagine. But they also had a display with the mirror in the back. And I remember just staring and it was, I think I could say legitimately, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but legitimately it literally moved me. I was, I was blown away yeah. by the beauty. Yeah. And there's a definite difference in, let's say, German watchmaking versus Swiss. Yeah. Yeah. Could you maybe explain a little bit of that? It's a little more sober. It's, um, there's a lot less frill. It's kind of a no frills style watchmaking. Like the German people or the German culture, I find that it has a lot of substance. So it's not just about beautiful looks. This, if something's beautiful, it's beautiful for a reason. Right. So you hear this a lot, this form follows function, but in Germany, where Bauhaus was, by the way, founded a hundred years ago this year. Okay. Um, and that's sort of the, the key slogan of Bauhaus or, right. or Werkbund as it came after Bauhaus. Um, form follows function is a very important maxim in, in product design in Germany. And brands like Alang and Zöne follow this it, without saying it, it's definitely followed. Sure. So, you know, you, you, you think about maybe a German car, Mercedes, BMW, and you think, you know, when the car door closes, it makes a certain sound that you don't hear on other cars. When you ignite the engine, it, it, it roars up in a certain way that, that you don't hear on American cars or Japanese cars. Right. So German watches are the same. They make a certain sound, they have a certain appeal, a certain visual. But I think you have to love it. I think you have to already be a little predisposed to that sort of minimalist idea. Um, of the no extra things, but everything that's there has a sense and a purpose and done in a, a very high quality way. Yeah, there's the attention to detail in, in a lot of movement is probably by far my favorite. Yeah. I mean, and with all due respect to Patek and Audemars and everybody else, I think I think Langa has aesthetically the most beautiful watches on the planet. Yeah, and a lot of that is the movement. Really, it's the the, the watch dial is beautiful, no doubt. But it's when for me, it's always when I turn it over and I see the movement that my heart just kind of skips a little beat. Yeah. Um, and there's a reason they use they use materials that no other brand really does. It's untreated German silver. It's been um, assembled mm. twice. There's not another watch brand that does this. I've heard this. Yeah. So they so they um, they create all the components. They finish the components. They put them together. They make sure that everything runs. Then they disassemble it again, repolish everything. You know, make everything perfect, and then assemble it one more time, just to make sure it's exactly the right way. Wow. Exactly perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. this is the 25th year. Mm -hmm. What is Langa doing yeah. to celebrate yeah. the 25th year? So it's it's you know for watch fans, this is a great year for Langa watches. Yeah. Every. Um, month almost, we're getting a new special edition, Langa one, Langa one edition, limited for this special anniversary year. And it started with, in January, with the Langa One edition that we saw at SIHH, 
which um, is like no other Lago One. It's a brand new, uh, brand new version, so to speak, in white gold. And what's very, very different are the blue elements. Um, there's a slight difference in the dial design. If you're a Lago aficionado, you would see it immediately. We have the blue elements, and also on the back, it's, it's carried over onto the back, the blue elements, which in this particular edition, we have an officer's case back. Okay. So you have to open up the officer's case back to see the movement. It's a, so it's a like a, a hinged case back that you open up to get your view of the movement. Um, and we have blue engravings that we've never had on a Lago watch before. Okay. And the engraving is, a, is a, a replication of the large date. So Lago was the first wristwatch to have a large date on the right. dial. Kicked off a whole new, a whole new trend of large dates. For sure, dates. because there are many brands now that have two wheel dates. Exactly, yeah. and this came, they, they were the first. Everything okay. came after them. Um, so we have a depiction of the of the large date in blue filled engraving on the balance cock where on the balance cocks are always hand engraved. You yes. can even have them personalized yes. if you want, um, but they're always different because it's always a unique piece of artistry. Um, so those that's this really special thing is the blue engravings, the blue details on the dial. But here on this officer's case back, we also have another engraving. We have the names engraved of Walter Lange mm -hmm. and his partner in the endeavor, Günther Blumlein. Those were the refounders of, of La Lange and Söhne, and we have them find their names engraved here on the case back. And I think that's a wonderful commemoration of two very special people. I think so too. Who are both unfortunately departed. Right. Um, and that's, I, I, it's just very special. Like if you're, if you are into Lange watches, you're going to find these editions very special. So this one was 250 pieces. Okay. Since this one, we've had four other editions, each 25 pieces. Various Lang of One editions in 25 pieces, and there are a few more to come this year still. Are there going to be 12 in total, or? They haven't revealed that. Okay. So, so far we have five. Uh, there will be a few more is what I've been told. I'm okay. not sure how many. So we'll have to keep following along. It'll be exciting to find out. Yep, exactly. So, yeah. One thing that has always struck me with uh, with Lange, as well as other German brands, is the gold chitons that are screwed down with the blue screws. Mm -hmm. Is that something mm -hmm. that's unique to German? It's not uniquely German. It, we also have that in Swiss watchmaking. Uh, but Lange uses a lot of chatons. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, very high quality movement. That's a very high quality way to, to encase or, or house a ruby bearing. Right. Um, it's certainly more beautiful way. It is. It is. It's a beautiful way. And of course, they really they really stand out because we have the um, three-quarter glass to plate that's used as the base plate on Lego watches. Right. Or, or most glass to based watches, anyway, will have the three-quarter plate. So yeah. there's a lot of a lot of expanse that you fill up with decoration. The chatons are one way. We have the blued screws. We have the um, glass to ribbing, which is a lot like Geneva waves, but yeah. a diff it's a different direction. But at, as you said before, form definitely follows function. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. The glass to three quarter plate is is large because it's stable, and the, the glass to watchmakers were all about stability. Um, this this watch has more of a. It will most likely be less likely to falter than you know. We're talking vintage watches. Right. Than than you know with the single bridges that the Swiss were sure. using, for example. Sure. And at some point, these will be vintage watches as well, yeah. which will be more stable. And collectors' pieces. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, yeah there we are. That's the the Langer One 25th anniversary. A lot of things to look forward to. Okay. Very exciting. Excellent. And do we know of any other pieces that are coming out or all of the anniversary editions going to be Lange One? Some version of Lange One okay. in the Lange One family. We don't, we don't know what they're still going to be bringing. All right. We look forward to it. Yeah. We look forward to it. So I want to thank everybody for taking this time to watch with us. And Elizabeth uh, flew over all the way from Germany just for this video. <laughs> oh, she did it. Um, <laughs> But thank you so much for, for meeting me. I'm, I'm happy to see you again, as always. Very a good, happy. dear friend from the Langa Boutique here in New York City. Uh, we appreciate you following along. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram. And before I go, how do we find you, Elizabeth? Right. So quillandpad.com is our website. Right. Go there to find long-form journal journalism, beautiful photos. We're on Facebook under Quill and Pad. Right. Instagram, Quill and Pad. Okay. Twitter. You know, all the usual social media. We'll platforms. put all of the links below so you guys can follow along with Elizabeth. And she's got a phenomenal team over there at Cool and Pat as well. By the way, I don't want to forget to mention those guys. And uh, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for taking your time. And we look forward to getting the next video to you very soon. Bye. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>